Hammer is definitely gonna fall faster than the feather step. Kelsey, a hammer and a feather will fall at the same rate. Except you're such an idiot, you know absolutely nothing! <laughs> Oh, my friend is hurt. We need an ambulance. Slow down, sir. We need a location. Uh, 31 Chambers Road. What happened? My friend fell off a building. I think he's really hurt. Okay, the ambulance is on its way. Stay put. Hello, what do we have here? Well, it looks like she fell from up here. I just talked to her friend Kelsey. She said that um, she's having some trouble with her physics homework and just took her over the edge, so. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of that lately. Mr. Elias has been giving some tough physics questions. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to collect some data and then I'll be out of here. Hey, let me know if you need anything. All right, thanks. Hello, Officer Joe. I think I've reached a conclusion. Good, yeah, what have you come up with? Well, after processing all the evidence, I believe that the death of the victim was not a suicide. Rather, it appears that the death was a homicide. And here's why. Let's first start with the evidence. From the scene of the crime, we were able to determine that the structure was 15 meters tall and that the victim landed 5.2 meters from the structure. We also learned that the victim had a mass of about 61.2 kilograms. In addition to this data, the lab had to, had to determine averages for three other measurements that would be necessary in determining the cause of death. These measurements are velocity of someone walking or tripping off of a structure, the pushing force of a person, and the amount of time that the per person would be in contact with what he was pushing. For all of these calculations, formulas from physics theories will be used. We will prove this homicide by showing that the victim fell too far away from the structure to be considered a suicide. Let's move to the suicide scenario. The first piece of information we must calculate is the time it takes to reach the ground. This time would be the same whether this was a homicide or a suicide, and we need this to calculate the horizontal distance from the structure. We plug the structure's height into our formula and we get a time of 1.75 seconds. With this time, we can calculate the horizontal distance from the structure while assuming that the victim was moving with a horizontal velocity of about 1 meter per second. Our calculation gives us a distance of 1.75 meters, which would land our victim right about here. Now we will move to the homicide scenario. The first item we must discuss here is the force of the person pushing the victim. After several tests, our labs concluded that a person in the heat of an argument would push with a force of about 1,550 newtons. With this, we can find the acceleration of the person pushing the victim. We can now calculate the velocity of the victim by using the acceleration in this formula. And, just like the suicide scenario, we will calculate the horizontal distance from the structure. This gives us a projected distance that is much farther from the structure, and, in comparison with the actual distance, our predictive value isn't far off. What does all of this mean? Based on our distance from the structure, the death of the victim could not have been self-inflicted. The actual event would have looked somewhat like this. Well, it sounds like you really did your research. That physics came in handy. I think we should go pay Kelsey a visit. Sounds good. Let's do it. Hello? Kelsey McGuinn. You're under the arrest for the murder of your friend. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you can and do will be used against you in the court of law. We all know that you're trying to cover this up as a suicide. For whatever physics, I could have gotten away with it! 